My name is Dina Jertsen. I am one of six co-directors at Parts and Crafts, which is a family makerspace here in Somerville. I like to make a lot of things. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to make miniatures and uh, dollhouse items. And recently I've been making a lot of models of buildings in and around Somerville, where I live more. I mean, I've always made, for quite a long time, models of things and dollhouse uh, objects, and I teach that a lot. I'm, I, I went to see a show by an artist named Mohammed Hafez, who is from Damascus in Syria, and he had built, he's an architect, he had built a bunch of models of bombed out buildings in Damascus. And so he'd used all these skills that I have as a dollhouse maker to, to make something really um, important about the world. I think that dollhouses and dollhouse making is, is one of those techniques where it's not necessarily taken very seriously. Um, there's probably a lot of reasons for that. Um, but it was interesting to me that you could use these same skills and approaches and, and really talk about important issues. And, and I had been struck walking around uh, my city ha about how much it was changing. Um, and I know, you know, intellectually and politically that it's changing in a way that's forcing a lot of people out, but it's also changing aesthetically and it just irritates me. The new construction kind of irritates me. There's very specific notes that it tends to hit. Um, gray siding, these like black rimmed windows, these, they do this thing where they'll have like a porch and then that'll be like fake wood. I, there's all these details that are just the same every time you see a new building go up. And then I feel like it remo it ruins the texture of the city. I mean, I love walking around and it just, it takes a place that I've known and loved for 20 years and turns it into some kind of weird subdivision for wealthy people. So I started making models about that feeling um, using all the dollhouse skills that I have from other things that I've done. I mean, I think like every person who was once a little girl, I have always loved dollhouses and miniatures. I worked in the professional theater for a long time where you do a lot of model making as a props maker. And um, I mean, it's just my medium. It's just something that people associate with me. There's a lot of stuff that I make in miniature that's far more frivolous and I make it with children, we make miniature food, and polymer clay, um, I, I take dolls and I make them into superheroes that, you know, like, like it's not all very serious but obviously when it came to expressing my frustration with gentrification, model making was the way I was going to do it. So these in front are called the, the baby twomps and they don't require very much explanation. Um, I made them shortly after the 2016 election. Um, they're, they're baby brats dolls with uh, sculpted heads of Donald Trump made out of polymer clay. Um, this piece is called uh, Memento Mori. I don't know, I might change that name. This is a model of a condo building directly across the street from where I live, slowly being devoured by a cherry tree. Um, it's always a little bit upsetting when neighborhood buildings, buildings in my neighborhood kind of collapse and then they, they get torn down and they get painted gray. You know, certain aesthetic problems I have with the new construction and I wanted to destroy one without being too violent. So there's a cherry tree growing through it. Um, it's been a whole bunch of different phases. Um, for about 10 years, I've been making a lot of miniature food out of polymer clay. Um, it's just something that I've obsessively done for a really long time and that I like to teach children how to do. Um, but I, I don't know, I've just always at some point or another engaged with model making or dollhouses. So these two pieces are actually models of the same building, though I made them a couple years apart. This one is called Park Street Sales, 510 Somerville Ave. And um, so before they replaced it with this condo, there used to be a bike shop, a very weird, crunchy little bike shop right down the street here that I always felt like it added a lot of texture, visual texture and emotional texture to the neighborhood because it was covered with these cedar shake sing shingles and it had these old um, signs. And then it was replaced with a big green building uh, full of condos that were at the time some of the most expensive condos in Somerville. They were $700,000 for a two bedroom apartment on oh. Somerville Ave. So this I made a cut very recently is that same building being destroyed by a, um, um, an oak tree, specifically an oak tree, an autumnal oak tree. So 
this is the building that's there and this is what it would look like if an oak tree grew out of the middle of it. All right, so part, this is Parts and Crafts. We're a family hacker, hacker space in Somerville. We run programs for kids aged seven to 13 in tinkering, making, electronics, computer programming, art, crafts, um, and all sorts of stuff like that, carpentry. Um, we have a homeschooling resource program, a after school program. We have summer and vacation camps and on the weekends we have open shop and we run classes in all those subjects for kids and adults. Um, all of our programs are opt-in, meaning that kids get to choose what it is that they want to do from the available options. And so we have a lot of stuff in our space that gives kids the opportunity to see things that might interest them and explore interests that they might have. Um, because we believe that everybody learns better if you're motivated to, to do the thing based on being genuinely interested in it. We do a lot of hot gluing, we have tons of bins of different materials that kids can reach in and pull out. Some of them are pretty obvious and straightforward, like popsicle sticks. Some of them are more complex and might require a little bit more instruction to learn how to use. We also have, we do a lot of intro electronics with kids, lighting up LEDs, motors, mates, building simple circuits. And we'll do projects with them using those materials and then they'll have the power to design their own project. I, I, so I moved to Summer, uh, Somerville around 96, 97, started hanging out in Union Square back when there wasn't much in Union Square and that's why it was cheap to live. There wasn't any trains and there wasn't any coffee besides Dunkin' Donuts. And, um, but the, some people have told me that I'm you know, 30 years too late in noticing these changes and some people have said that the fact that I moved here as a young artist was actually the first, the beginning of the end, the death knell mm. of gentrification in Somerville because I wasn't born here. Um, but I'm the person I am in the situation that I am at the point in time where I am and, and I've lived here for so long and I had my child here and he went to school here. So I think I first started noticing it when the Green Line extension became a reality. This is something that's been dangled in front of people for more than 10 years and it used to actually be sort of the butt of a joke almost. Be like, oh, well, when the Green Line comes. Um, but then it really started coming and one by one, um, different developments started moving in and people started becoming aware of how, how expensive housing had gotten. I mean, everyone expects a luxury condominium to be very expensive, but it has this effect all across the city of making even really not very nice apartments um, shoot up in rent. And so, and you notice more and more people leaving, moving away from Somerville, experiencing a lot of anxiety and stress about what's gonna happen when their lease is up. So that, that's just been the past few years that I've noticed it quite as much. I just think that now we're starting to see it, whereas house after house after house turns into a gray siding dwelling that most of the people who live in Somerville couldn't possibly afford to live in. Um, we teach kids how to solder. Soldering is when you use a very hot pen and you use it to soften a very soft metal to make good electrical connections. Um, and even though this tool is gets quite hot and would burn you very badly, we teach kids how to do it all the time. We teach them how to be careful. We teach them how to sit still and, and pay attention to what they're doing. We also, obviously we have a ton of art supplies for bedazzling all of your various kids' projects, as well as things focused on specific projects that we might be doing at any uh, at, at any given time. Everybody who works here has their obsessions. Um, they're things that they're specifically interested in and they like to work with kids on. So some people love bikes, some people love sewing. I obviously love making miniatures and dollhouse stuff. And then we work with kids on whatever it is that they want to make. It's hard to say. I mean, I, my full-time job is working here at Parts and Crafts and we're a nonprofit. Uh, we run programs for kids that I, a lot of people really love. Um, we're all makers in some capacity, not all necessarily in the visual arts, um, but we are also renters. We rent this building and we're, uh, you know, we're prey to the same forces that residential renters are. So the answer is, I don't know. Um, a lot of Somerville's identity as a city has always been with, tied with um, both immigrants and artists and we're swiftly becoming a city where none of those people are going to live here anymore. So it sort of becomes a slogan. just. To, I mean, a city without affordable housing is not a city of immigrants and artists. So you can call yourself that, but 
you're, that's not where you're going to be. Um, we do a lot of sewing with kids. I particularly like uh, refurbishing older sewing machines, so I have a, a little bit of a backlog there. But this is a machine that quite young children can use. They can't always thread it, but once you get them going and so they can sew bags and clothes. And we do all fabric arts, knitting, crocheting, embroidering, stuff like that. Both of our spaces have a library. This library uh, is more focused on making things and sort of casual kid lit like comic books and you know fun fun books. Um, at our after school program, every day you'll see three or four kids that are just sitting here and have chosen to spend their time reading. So, I mean, I think the absolute most important thing is to advocate politically, and I don't for one second believe that the models that I make are a replacement for that. Um, there's, there's been periodically some issues. We just voted in a new bunch of aldermen. There's a, a couple of legislation things that are out there, including a transfer tax, which is a tax on the sale of a home in which the buyer does not intend to live there. Um, a lot of people, even people who wouldn't be subject to it, are opposing it, and there's some, it has to go to the Massachusetts state governments to be ratified. But those are things you can advocate for affordable housing. Every time there's a development that goes up, the, the, the people who are, do, the developers try and argue some loophole where they don't actually have to fulfill their affordable housing um, obligation. And you can advocate against letting the various boards in Somerville make those decisions. Um, and you can you know keep putting the pressure on your older people who get voted out all the time. A bunch of them just did and, and say, if you're not gonna fight for the, the people who live in Somerville right now, then you're gonna be out of a job. So there's two places that you can see my work on the streets of Somerville right now. One is at Martha Friends Smithsonian Museum on Highland Ave. Um, it's out on her front lawn in a little museum that she maintains. There's a piece called Conversion, which is sort of a, a pile of buildings and then some condos on top. And then there's another phone box project that I did right in the middle of Union Square, which is organized by the Nave Gallery and sponsored by the Summer Arts Council, which is a piece of, about that neighborhood right there and the changes that are happening to it.